Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Read M. My name is Emily and today I'm going to be recommending some weird books for weird girls. That's you. First things first, I think we need to address the elephant in the room and that is that I've been gone for several months but I promise I really sincerely promise that I have a good reason for that and that is that I had a spinal injury and then needed spinal surgery which had to be addressed over the course of several months. It was not a thrilling time. That's my justification for being gone. It was a journey. Luckily we're almost fully recovered now. That being said, that whole time I was fully incapable of recording a YouTube video. Um, as you can tell I'm also standing up now because I'm not allowed to sit down still so three more weeks of that. But anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna be standing. I'm gonna film a video. I'm so excited. This is all I've been wanting to do since this all began. That being said, I'm so excited to be able to make some recommendations today. If you are subscribed to me or if you found this video, I'm assuming you like weird literature. And I'd like to think that I've read a lot of weird books, seen a lot of weird movies, yada yada. So I'm here to recommend some of my favorite weird books that I've read. And I I decided it would be kind of fun if I were to go in a specific order for this video. I'm gonna go in order of least weird to weird but rest assured they are all strange fiction. Let me grab those books. So the first book that I have is more of a collection than a singular book and that is all of Ian Reid's books. If I'm gonna go in order of weirdness the least weird is I'm thinking of ending things and then after that I had put faux. I have two different copies. This one's signed by Paul Meskel. Fun fact. Take a look at that bad boy. So if anything's gonna convince you to read it, maybe that would. Or the fact that he recommended me personally, We Spread by Ian Reid. Um, this is definitely the weirdest of Ian Reid's books, but also my favorite. Now I'm gonna give you a quick little synopsis and pitch for all of the above. I'm thinking of ending things follows a couple that are on a drive to the man's parents house and the entire book is kind of just them talking and things not really making sense around them. There are also chapters in between these chapters of talking of a mysterious caller who seems to be maybe stalking the female main character but you don't really know who they are, why they're doing this, or what they're even attempting to do and then it just kind of descends into craziness. I'd also recommend the movie Movie directed by Charlie Kaufman. It is somehow even weirder than the book. It definitely is harder to understand if you haven't read the source material and the entire third act is a ballet. Not in the book, only in the movie. Don't, cannot give you a reason why, but it's something to check out if you're into weird things. Next up, of course, we have Faux, also by Ian Reid. This is a sci-fi story, but I'd call it light on the sci-fi. It is once again an examination of a relationship. A main couple is living in a house alone, kind of like a farm vibe. I forget exactly where it is, but a man shows up at their house and kind of gives them a proposition that the man of the couple should go to outer space. And in the meantime, they'll replace him with some sort of like cyborg person that will make it so that the wife doesn't have to be sad that her husband is away in space. But then of course that's not exactly what's going on and things become very strange. It's also very slow, very quaint, very cerebral, much like all of his books, and really keeps you in the dark for the whole time. This one also is a movie. I still haven't seen it, which is really unfortunate because it starts Paul Maskell, aka why he signed this book, and I still haven't watched the movie. That's unfortunate for me. But anyway, I do want to get to that. And of course, finally, for Ian Reid, we have what I believe is his magnum opus, and that is We Spread. This book is very sad. It's about a woman in a kind of senior living home and her battle with dementia and the end of her life. And that's just what it is. It's just really a descent into something very sad. And I guess in some ways the concept is less weird than the other two books I just mentioned, but the way that it's written and obviously the nature of what it's dealing with causes a lot of strangeness. But this one really hits the hardest and people I know who have thought his other books are okay, they've all loved this. This book is just absolutely incredible and definitely not your typical read, but it's so worth it. And I think in terms of themes, maybe it is more normal than the other two, but in terms of execution, delivers more weirdness. Next up we're gonna kind of bring a little blast from the past and I mean that literally. We're going with The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Now don't click away. The rest of my books are not classics. Don't worry I'm not gonna just give you a school lesson here but I really had to shout this out because I read this book in a class I took in college called Dangerous Children which is one of my favorite tropes in weird books and this one did not disappoint. I also really love Henry James's prose and I think that if you like a lot of these other authors I'm mentioning you should get into some Henry James. He also has another book called What Maisie Knew, which 
is also dangerous child vibes and pretty weird but like not not it's not speculative it really it's it's yeah and that one had other issues i would really recommend return of the square if you also didn't know this is the book that inspired the netflix show the haunting of blind manor so if you watched that and liked it maybe you would like this this book is kind of a gothic tale about a governess who comes to this fancy mansion and has to take care of these two children miles and something i don't remember the other there's a girl while she's there she starts seeing some ghosts she believes and she starts thinking that the children are up to no good she thinks the children are somehow haunting this manor and it's kind of just becomes a question of whether the governess is mad if the children are evil if the other people working there are evil if the ghosts are real yada yada and it's really just like a spiral of confusion and terror and it's great it's really great. It's very vague. If, if you like the vague weirdness of a lot of these books, this one is gonna deliver. The next book I have, I think, is significantly grosser. And actually, in fact, I know is significantly grosser than the other books I've just mentioned. And definitely significantly grosser than some of the books that I'm gonna put higher up on this list of weirdness. But in terms of conceptual weirdness, it's not that high up there. And that is Bones and All by Camille DeAngelis. Now, I will, you know, give you the caveat that this is about cannibalism. This entire book is about cannibalism, incredibly graphic cannibalism. There's also a movie of this book. I just, I just realized right now, maybe Hollywood's in its weird era. Because these, all of these books have adaptations so far. Every single one. Except for we spread. But like, it probably will eventually. So that's interesting. Anyway, this book is high on the body horror. The movie's even higher on the body horror. But the concept of cannibalism as a metaphor for connection and emotional intimacy, is that that strange? I would argue not. This book follows a young protagonist, I believe she's in high school, this is technically a young adult book even though it's quite gross and graphic, and she discovers as she grows up that she's a cannibal, a people eater, um, but in this world cannibals are not necessarily people that just want to eat people or are murderers or anything, it's like an innate desire that they cannot control. It's almost like a type of creature, like they cannot control that they are a cannibal. It's very hard, it's hard to explain, but you know, the metaphor makes sense if you think about it deep enough. But anyway, so she, growing up, like ate her babysitter, all this stuff, eventually her parents abandon her and now she finds herself having to live in the world alone even though she's a young adult and she doesn't know what to do. So she kind of goes off on like a road trip, tries to find people to connect with, she finds, you know, more cannibals, she finds some non-cannibals, she finds a romance, she finds all these things and she has to deal with the fact that she has to hide her true self the whole time or suffer the consequences. Emotional intimacy. It eats you alive. Okay, so the next one, some people are gonna like laugh at me for putting it this low on the weirdness scale, but that's just Eric LaRocca books. Um, I've read two of his short story collections and they are Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke and Other Misfortunes and The Trees Grew Because I Bled There. And you know, it's hard to put the short stories on a scale because they're all different. His stories are really gross like really really gross i think one of them on it says these stories are body horror at its best they are nightmarish and they are deeply human i love them so like yeah we're gonna get body horror we're gonna get gore we're gonna get tapeworms we're gonna get trauma but but i feel like when i say the word weird i mean in concept and i mean combining it with like the writing style as well so this doesn't really do that this is just gross but the actual themes of the stories are very human, very loving almost. I don't know how to describe it. It's like what Eric LaRocca is trying to say is quite normal. The way he's saying it is unhinged. So I don't know if that quite makes sense, but I will just say, you know, I can't really pitch all these short stories because they're all different. I don't remember all of them, but things have gotten worse since we last spoke, which also has this cover, which is really what got me to read it and has the tagline, what have you done today to deserve your eyes? That's my favorite out of all of them. That one's actually a novella. It's like over hundred pages. That's my favorite of all his stories. I also love, he does a lot of his stories in kind of like a online forum format. Those are some of my favorites in general as well. If I had to put weirdness of one of his specific short stories, the one that's called Please Leave or I'm Going to Hurt You is perhaps one of the weirdest things I've ever read in my entire life, that one is definitely at the top of this list. I do not understand how he was brave enough to write that because I wouldn't want anyone I knew associating me with that. Did I give it five stars? Yes. Do we need to address that? No. Read it for yourself. Okay, next up is an extra special entry in this list because it is the book that got me into weird books. I love this author with all of my heart. He actually told me once on Twitter that he printed out my review of one of his other books and has it in his house, so. That's very special to me. But this one is A House at the Bottom of the Lake by Josh Mallerman. 
This is the book that got me into weird books. I picked it up because Kayla from Books and Lala had loved it and read it and said it was amazing. She could not have been more right. This is incredible weird fiction. So basically, this story, super simple. It's about two teens who are interested in each other and they decide to go on a date. Where do they go on this date? At a lake. And this lake, I think it's called the Third Lake. It may be called the Second Lake. I think it's the Third Lake. There are multiple lakes in this area where they live, but one of them is like one that no one goes to and it's kind of like a secret lake. And so these teens stumble across it. And when they go there, they're completely alone. No one's there. They go underwater and they notice there's a house at the bottom of a lake. I know, big surprise. But they kind of become slowly more and more obsessed with this house. And there's obviously questions of what this could represent, if it's a literal house, if it's their connection together, if it's nostalgia, blah, 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 all these things, right? But they keep going back and then they decide to explore the house. So you just get these crazy underwater, like submersive descriptions and then things just get really really unhinged and that's all i need to say if you just if you just want to sink you just want to just want to sink read this i beg of you to read this because mm, it's delectable absolutely delectable next up is another kayla recommendation of course i think literally all of these kayla has written and enjoyed so that's kind of hilarious on my part but anyway this book i picked up when i was in chicago because it's from a local chicago author and i'm very glad i did because i don't think i would have picked this up otherwise if i didn't notice it was a local author to that area but anyway it is this thing between us by gus moreno i had heard about this before it's kind of pitched as a like alexa gone rogue story and again features a couple. I guess I read a lot of books that feature couples having issues. Anyway, it features a couple who have an Alexa type product that's going rogue but that's just how it begins. So at the start of this book you do get the story of the Alexa going rogue kind of flashback situation but we also know that the woman of the couple is dead and the circumstances surrounding her death are somewhat political and there's a lot of talk about the ramifications of how that happened but then also we just have our main male character navigating grief. He does that through a journey. I, the, the way I'm describing this is very strange, but the way it is itself is very strange. It's kind of like a road trip into grieving madness. Um, there's a dog. I'm warning you, there's a dog. I'm not gonna tell you what I mean by that, but I think you know what I mean by that. Eventually there's also like monsters and creatures. It definitely becomes speculative and strange. There's like an isolated house and things happening. There's just a lot of gore. There's a lot of gross. There's a lot of monsters. There's a lot, a lot of grieving. And it's so good. Amazing. I really want to read more from this author. Next up, we have another short story collection. This one, less gross than the Eric LaRocco, but somehow weirder. We have Out There by Kate Folk. Now, this short story collection overall, I actually didn't love. The other ones, the Eric LaRocco ones, are more like solid all the way through. This one, there were definitely some that I wasn't loving, but they're all weird. They are all weird. But I do have to point out that Heart Seeks Brain in this collection is one of my favorite stories of all time now. I think about it so much. I think about the last sentence probably once a day and I'm not exaggerating. I'm not going to describe what it is. I'm not going to describe what any of these stories are because I don't want to give them away because they're so short, but they're just all so weird. I think I will point out that a lot of them are sci-fi and not like speculative weird. They're like legitimately sci-fi and that's kind of fun and makes the like gag of some of them like easier to grab onto and like keeps you flipping the pages because you like want to see how this gimmick's gonna go but then some of them are just like really weird and some of that made it a little boring to me but like that's how like weird vague books go some people are gonna get it some people aren't and like i just didn't get some of these i will also point out that the turkey rumble has the funniest premise of anything ever it's literally about a family who on thanksgiving their family tradition is to inflict minor injuries so so like kind of a new couple is coming to the family like she's introducing her boyfriend to the family for the first time and he has to do the turkey rumble did i love its execution no but like the premise 10 out of 10. also the bone ward the bone ward is a sci-fi one that one is gruesome but pretty solid the ending though yeah anyway these overall were they my favorite no 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 heart six brain yes 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 okay we're coming close to the end now we're reaching peak weirdness now this book is my second highest on the weirdness scale and it's I'm very happy because it's becoming quite popular and I'm I'm a little surprised because it, it's up there um but that is Monstrillo by Gerardo Samano Cordova this is another chef's kiss brief book it is about a woman whose son dies at home because he has like lung deformities and stuff. So when he dies, this is the first chapter by the way, she 
extracts a piece of his lung and keeps it in a jar. Now, when I read this little premise, I thought like he was like in surgery and she like asked to get a piece of his lung out. We're just digging on into our child. And the body horror in this, sickening. Sickening and like slimy. Like it's just very crude, very like, <sighs> there's a lot of gunk in this book. The lung piece though becomes a monster because she feeds it chicken broth and like soaks it in that and then it becomes this little cute guy. The rest of the book is just her taking care of this little monster like it's her own son, which it kind of is, and it also is just a huge metaphor for grief. The other part though that makes this book really weird is that it's told in four parts, and each part is from a different perspective. But they're not really perspectives you would expect to be following, so the first one is the mother. The second one is her best friend who has even weirder stuff going on. Honestly, that little like aside turns some people off from this book. And you know what? I could understand that, but also I was fascinated by it. I kind of really liked that part. Then it follows the father and then it follows Monsterly himself. I, I don't really know how else to pitch this to you. It's very slow, very sad, very gross. But if that, you know, checks your boxes, you're gonna like this. And last, but not least, of course, we can't have a weird books for weird girlies video without talking about the OG. The one, you know, not OG in terms of when it came out or anything, but just the one that we're all obsessed with. And that's Bunny. I mean, we're not gonna have this video and not talk about Bunny. We're all gonna be talking about Bunny. Bunny, I'm sure you've heard of it. Bunny is taking the world by storm. Bunny is iconic. Bunny is everything. I love Bunny. I am Bunny. So Bunny is a really hilarious, unhinged, satire about grad school, especially uh, MFA in creative writing. It is about a group of girls who are part of this program that call themselves the bunnies. They all address themselves as bunny and each other as bunny. It's kind of like a collective hive mind vibe. And we're following a character who's not part of the bunnies. She's not a bunny is what they would say, but she's part of their cohort in their writing group. And she kind of desperately wants to fit in. She makes fun of them with her other best friend who's not a bunny but there's something like alluring to belonging and she just really wants to be part of this group that she can't get into and she's so lonely and dealing with all these things. She decides to go to one of their meetings one day which is called Smut Salon and she shows up and she can't resist coming back and what is going on in Smut Salon? I will not reveal. The book will reveal and it is it is just so much weirder than you could possibly imagine. And that's just the beginning. Smut Salon is just the beginning. So please read Bunny. Please, please read it. Please. Oh, if you like weird. Oh, oh, Bunny. How I love you so. I mean, Margaret Atwood says it best. Oh, Bunny, you are so genius. Anyway, I hope that my recommendations in this video made any sense and weren't too weird. But you know what? If you clicked on this, it's okay if they were weird because that's what you want. With all that being done, I'm so excited to hear. Uh, if you've read any of these books, please comment that down below. And also let me know if there's any books you think I would enjoy based on me having enjoyed all of these books. I'm expecting to read a lot more weird books soon and be able to talk about them finally again in this video now that I can move around and not be dying at all times. Something else I'm especially excited for in terms of reading weird books is Summerween, which is a readathon which happens every summer. This year it's happening in July. You know, I haven't actually picked my TBR yet. I don't even remember what the prompts are, but some random books I bought recently that like I could read are Pen Pal by Dathan Auerbach. Don't know how to say his name. I'm so sorry, but Pen Pal, like this has been on my list for so long and I know Gabby loves it and I've heard it's like sickening. So we need that. And then I don't know what this is, but I just saw this at a used bookstore and it's just a gothic fantasy weird horror short stories. And then like literally has weird in it. And then like, it's like a mix of classic authors and modern authors. And the first story is by Louisa May Alcott. And I was like, I didn't know she wrote gothic fantasy weird horror short stories. So I had to pick that up. So like maybe I'll be reading these soon. What I'm trying to say is that we have a lot of really exciting things coming up in the next few weeks and months because I'm finally back in action and ready to make content. So if you're still watching for some weird reason, I'm so grateful to you and please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing for engagement and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!